I start this part two of partial history of the clan, I'd like to point out that there are token minorities helping out white fraternal organizations, corporal groups, uh, political groups, lobby groups, various groups, and they all basically say that if I highlight their part, they're going to help them suppress me and not help me. No matter how you slice it, they're going to help them with no ulterior motives. I'm going to deliver this. Feminist groups, LGBT groups, uh, token minority groups, white supremacist groups, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, uh, you name it, law enforcement, all have been threatening me the whole time. Okay. So let's go to, um, so the clan, right? Estab the first clan is what this video is about. Established in the wake of the Civil War was a defining organization of the Reconstruction era. They sought to overthrow the Republican state governments in the South with voter intimidation and violence uh, against blacks and uh, their allies and any Southern people who sympathize with Northern leaders, etc. They say it was from 1865 to 1871 in the first clan. And there's, there's a notable gap, gap between the first clan and the second, which is said to start in 1915 to 1944. This shows you how these groups are part of other fraternal organizations and they rise. These clan groups, the clan, there's various clans, there's factions. They kind of sit there for a while, they fester, then they rise. It reminds me of the Rosicrucians and the Masons, right? The Rose Cross, right? The, the Burning Cross is eventually going to rise, okay? Uh, when they're, they're needed to suppress people who are opposed to a kind of enlightenment agenda that this country was founded on. And they're there to micromanage things for sexual control. First and foremost, they control the reproductive cycle, right? The Ku Klux Klan is the circle, right? It's a circle. You know, it's a reproductive cycle. Okay. And there's a lot of you know, people being named after these people, counties being named. We'll get to that. So in 1971, the federal law enforcement... Oh, excuse me. Okay, we'll get to that later. Okay, excuse me. Um, oh, no, no. Okay, there we are. Okay. And... 1871, the federal law enforcement suppresses them. My right? federal law enforcement suppresses them. Um, these people made colorful costumes, uh, masks, conical hats, etc. Okay, it is said to be founded in Pulaski, Tennessee, December 24th, 1865. Now, notice how the the Confederate generals look. They kind of look like Santa Claus. And, you know, Albert Pike, for instance, Nathan Bedford Force, who you know, eventually gets white hair, kind of looks like Uncle Sam in popular culture. Okay, this is not a coincidence. These guys are part of the core of American culture through the fraternal organization system like the Masons. Okay. Officer Frank McCool. Okay, so who, there were six former Confederate officers are given credit to, for founding it. You know, um, Nathan Bedford Force is, joins two years later and becomes the first uh, Grand Wizard. Okay, but it's said to be founded by these people here. Um, Frank McCord, Richard Reed, John Lesters, John Kennedy. Again, I tell you, John Kennedy. Okay. Something Jones and James Crow. It's inspired by the Sons of Malta. Now, this is a very important thing, part of it. Who they're inspired by. What, what, who inspired the first clan? This group called the Sons of Malta. And there's all kinds of misinformation. In Masonry, there is a degree, uh, you know, there's groups of the Knights of Malta. The Malta Knights degrees. There's Knights of Kadesh, there's Templar degrees in the Scottish Rite and so on and so forth. So, and of course, the Scottish Rite and Masonry are very much involved in the clan. Okay, Nathan Bedford Forrest himself was said to be a clan, uh, a Mason. Okay. So who were these sons of Malta? That's a part of what this video is about because it's so they're so influential uh, at the time and they had everything to do with the initiation rites of the clan and, and what the clan the first clan was based on. And the other clans are based on the first clan. Okay. So the initiation rites parodied the Freemasons, etc. So it was kind of a parody. These people are goofy. It's like the People in the military and the police, they're hazing, they're frats, they're raping women, they're goofing around, ooh, ooh, you know, it, wait, it gets better from a scary movie. This kind of attitude, right? It's kind of a sissy, nerdy, kind of jock, kind of American attitude, if you will. And it comes from these fraternal organizations that made it popular in the culture. Okay, so... 
So some people claim that they were founded when worthy, uh, tried to take Cuba. Okay. Um, there's degrees like grand conductor, you know, uh, positions, grand conductor, grand sergeant, right? They had rituals suggesting that they had erotic sex-like reproductive cycles. Okay. Um, basically, uh, in a magazine that came out that said that they were encouraging sexual immorality caused their fall, and they are said to have lodges all over America. The Sons of Malta, you know, I've never really heard of them until I read this article. You know, I, I don't remember hearing them, of them. And they were this huge fraternity. To give you an example of how there were so many fraternities and secret societies at the time, and the Klan was just one of them, okay? And the reason why they fell was one white supremacist organization cracking down on another, okay? So you look at the Enforcement Act, for example, of 1871, there was a bunch of white racists all over the place, okay? They just didn't agree with these guys, just like there was a bunch of white racists in the North during the Civil War. They just didn't agree with the, the South seceding from the Union, and some of them sympathized with blacks, uh, some of the white Northerners, but th they were basically a bunch of white racists who believed in white supremacy and felt that their culture should elevate whites above other people, and they continued to do so well after the Civil War, and they continue to do so to this day. All right. It's part of why they're fuming right now to try to make it seem like I don't know what I'm talking about. They made it hard for me to make this video. They made it hard for me to take notes. They're... they're this is this is what they do. All right. Um, let's see where were we? Uh, all right. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff about the Sons of Malta. Let's just skip over that for now because they're making it hard for me. Um, So two years after it was founded, Nathan Bedford Forrest became the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. There was a massacre of over 300 black soldiers at Fort Pillow before he became a Klansman, um, where he's, he's blamed for it, okay? Um, he, he, his grandson was a Brigadier General in the Air Force that was the first uh, general to be killed in action uh, in World War II. Okay, in Europe, and he was killed in a bombing. Okay. All right, so they claim that he eventually ordered the Klan to be dissolved. Okay, and he gave a speech about racial harmony, but this, this, this is stupid. Okay, this guy, um, whether it happened or not, it was some superficial bullshit. His politics, you know how that goes. Okay. He was he said to be one of the richest men in the South. You know, by the time of the Civil War, he had amassed, some people claim, $1.5 million. He owned three th over 3,345 acres in Mississippi and at least half interest in a plantation in Arkansas. Okay. He married the niece of a Presbyterian minister. Okay. So the, this guy, you know, again, has everything to do with Christianity, has everything to do with fraternal organizations. Don't be mistaken to think that Christians are the only racist institutions and, and groups and religious groups and token minority kind of groups. The, le the left and the non-Christians are also racist token minorities. What I mean by racist, one, one can argue is a broad sense, but it's really a very hurtful sense as they uphold the, um, the principles, the culture, the sentiments, the behaviors of the white establishment and target people like me. So I don't consider people who are in a white culture to be truly black in their car, core, in their soul, okay, like the Masons, people in the military, police, these guys are establishment cronies and henchmen, you know, they've accepted the devil culture of these fraternal organizations that dominates every culture that's allowed today, okay, I think that much is obvious, I think we can all agree on it, and we can also agree that people, we can all agree on it um, behind the scenes, if you will. And we can all agree that people play stupid about this because they're on some bitch ass shit. And it has to do with hazing and acting like a clown ass bitch. It has to do with the movie American Pie, scary movie. That kind of act, that kind of way they behave it has to do with Adam Sandler. People act like bitch ass motherfuckers with no heart. And then there's a bunch of racist guys that drive trucks or something. And that's America in a nutshell. All right. Um, so again, uh, Dathan Bedford Force was called the Wizard of the Saddle. 
Okay, this has everything to do with the military, where it overlaps with the clan and fraternal organizations. Just like the Sons of Malta is said to be founded by the military, so was the clan. Okay, and he was uh, known for his cavalry tactics, disrupt disrupting communication lines, sabotaging railroad tracks, you know, pushing his horses to the fastest speed he can to ambush people. And he was considered one of the better officers uh, in the Civil War. Some of them consider him the best. He has statues, he has obelisks where he's buried and stuff like this, and that connects it to Egypt and so on and so forth. And I'm pretty sure we can all understand what's going on here. There's a bunch of racist white people on the right, left, fraternal organizations everywhere, racist white-skinned people, whites and Jews. There's token minorities helping them, and they're claiming to be the Jesus descendant. You look at Nathan Bedford's forest pictures when he's younger, he resembles the image of Christ that they, they put out there and he was called uh, that devil forest by the union and so on and so forth. We can go on and on. These are Satanists that want you to believe they're good Christians and they want uh, me to look gay. They want and so on and so forth. And they edit my pictures and they poison me. They edit my videos. This is what's going on here. This is their tactics. They disrupt uh, social, political, economic processes so they can control sexual behavior and control the future as they say the children are the future. And of course, they have lots of money just like Nathan Bedford Forrest did and so on and so forth.